true propositions exist. If atheism is true, it follows that atheism is false. Proposing that atheism is not a proposition, so it cannot be either true or false, is a category error. Whether any belief, and disbelief is itself a belief, is true or false is irrelevant to the demonstrable reality that it is a belief. This discussion will treat atheism as the proposition that God does not exist. In a more general sense, the vast majority of those who claim to be atheists would also claim that the proposition nothing supernatural exists is true. To make either proposition is to assume that true propositions exist. They must exist, as they are necessary to assert that they do exist, or self-refuting that they do not exist. Certain propositions must be true, as our lives, thought patterns and interactions are all based upon them. Without them, reality would be absurd. Likewise, logical laws such as both X and not X cannot be true at the same time and in the same way, the law of non-contradiction, also exist. To claim that the law of non-contradiction is invalid would be relying upon it being valid. If a person was brought to trial for murder based upon DNA samples from the scene matching those from the person, and their attorney claimed that their DNA continues to change so on the day was not identical to the samples, and the jury was comprised of relativists, they would agree that one's DNA can change. Even a relativist is compelled to use very basic deduction and induction to infer relativism. The only way for anybody to be a consistent relativist would be to abandon reason, logic, so true propositions, and be literally unreasonable. True propositions aren't contingent upon mankind. The proposition there are no human beings was true before mankind existed. That I am presently writing this is now a true proposition despite nobody formulating such a proposition. The scientific method would fail in the absence of true propositions, so Roger Bacon could not have dealt with some of the oversights of Aristotle and peers, then gone on to establish the principles that have brought us the technology to allow the Joe Average of today to live like a king of his times. Logical laws existed before mankind. The earth is spherical and the earth is cubical could not both be simultaneously true either before mankind existed or now. We are not the measure of all things. Propositions occupy no volume, have no mass, possess no energy, and are not limited to certain times. If the universe did not now exist, the proposition there is no universe would be true. To claim of a table or chair or barrel it just exists, implying that there is no explanation for its existence, would be no less ludicrous than claiming that there is no explanation for the existence of any specific proposition. It is not reasonable to dismiss the logical principle of sufficient reason, as you might do a taxi driver who has brought you to your destination. If true propositions are merely a brute fact, why would the pond scum from which we supposedly evolved be in touch with true propositions? How would that have assisted their survival? Likewise, natural science includes the often unspoken assumption that nature is entirely physical. Limiting scientific investigation to solely the physical is an artificial restriction, so is not natural and is also not science, as it has built-in confirmation bias. True propositions must draw their nature from, or be a part of, an entity which is timeless, is not limited to the physical, occupies no volume of space, and is metaphysically necessary. As time, space and physical entities self-evidently exist, 
This entity must also have intention and the ability to make this all happen. Yes, this is personal. No, physical only entity has intent. No brick intends to become part of a building. No block of chocolate intends to be eaten. No banner intends to be read. No sheet music intends to be played. No shoes intend to be walked in. If your own enduring self-awareness was a physical only entity, you would not be able to comprehend the preceding syllogism at all, so you are demonstrating that reality includes entities not solely physical. In logical parallel to that, as it is necessary that this entity has always existed, and it, as it has communicated with mankind, subjectively communicates with us now, yet mankind have not always existed, that rules out any solo entity and any entity contingent upon mankind. Goodbye, all idols and images. As this entity has paid a colossal price to recover us from lethal terminal rebellion, Unselfish love is intrinsic to this entity. Unselfish love cannot be a solo event. So there is more than one always existing entity existent to enable unselfish love to have been expressed before mankind existed. Connecting the dots, the God hated by many atheists, so actually misotheists, does not actually exist. Effectively, they despise a highly polarised edition of themselves, a selfish, controlling, insecure person. They are not despising the necessary, uncreated creator. If God did not exist, would the proposition God does not exist be true? If God did not exist, the proposition itself would not exist, so it could not be true. Ergo, it is necessary that God exists for you to be able to claim that he doesn't exist, or make any other claim.